So gluten is, is technically called a prolamine. And without getting too scientific, a prolamine is just a protein that is in some specific grains. And these grains are barley, rye, wheat, spelt, and sometimes oat. Those are the main gluten foods. Now in some severe cases, there's gluten that are in other products. And this is where uh, celiac patients have to be very careful about the cosmetics they're using, about what's going on with certain supplements. Is it gluten free? That's in the other binders in their supplements that are glutenages. Okay. Uh, we've got to be very careful about what's going on there for the celiac patients. But a gluten sensitivity, it's mainly paying attention to the food you're eating that I just mentioned. Celiac disease is, is really interesting. In, in a lot of cases, it's quite, uh, the people are very unwell. They're not putting weight on, they're having severe digestive ailments, whether that's diarrhea or uh, excessive gas and bloating and cramping are very keynote. Uh, but some people it can be very latent and almost a little bit more silent where they're just not feeling great, they're not thriving, they're not thinking clearly. Uh, so that I've seen completely different spectrums. How you diagnose celiac disease, generally speaking, the least invasive approach is to do an antibody test, which is through the blood. We're looking at what are called transglutaminases. Um, and the other sort of keynote, or the, the, the gold standard, is to actually get a biopsy done, which is a much more invasive procedure. But what we've learned in the, in the most uh, recent functional medicine diagnostics is that there are different genetic tests that we can find out if we're actually really severely reactive to gluten. And these are some of the different scales. When you're actually talking about a sensitivity to, to gluten, you can actually run a very broad food sensitivity panel and look at many different foods all at once. Uh, including the gluten foods. And this is a much different diagnosis than testing for celiac in its own right. A gluten sensitivity, these people may be putting weight on, they can't lose weight, whereas celiac patients, generally speaking, are having a hard time gaining weight. Um, but gluten sensitive patients are going to be generally in pain, they're in joint pain, they're going to have digestive issues, potentially migraines. A lot of phlegm and build up in their chest. These are some of the real keynotes that we see with the sensitivity versus celiac disease. So celiac disease can present in children and one of the first keynotes to look for is, is that child thriving? Is Are they growing? Are they uh, matching their, their growth goals? Uh, are they doing well in school? Are they sleeping okay? But usually what's going to happen is some of the other digestive concerns, clearly there's another big area to look at, but usually what can happen is you're just seeing that the child's not thriving, they're not really coming to their full physical potential. Um, we all have different stages of growth and that's not to panic and think that everyone has celiac, but it is a clue that says, okay, let's potentially investigate this because it's becoming more and more common. Right now it's about 1 in 133 uh, people have celiac disease. Gluten sensitivity, I, I'm seeing in my practice between one and two. So there's a big difference between the two. Gluten free is not a trend. I think what's happening right now is it's become quite a buzzword, and a lot of people think that it's just going to be this next fad diet that comes today and goes tomorrow. Uh, but what we're seeing is that a lot of people are actually physiologically and biochemically affected by gluten and what, what has become of the way we make grains today and how that affects us. The biggest fad that is out there is eating gluten-free products and we have to be very careful when we actually buy a gluten-free product that you see on the shelf at the, at the grocery store. A lot of these products are filled with sugars and they're filled with corn and both of these are actually known to actually increase inflammation in the body and in some cases continue to make people feel unwell even though they're technically gluten-free. So just because it says gluten-free on the label you still have to be buyer aware, buyer beware rather and make sure that you're reading and making sure we're avoiding sugars and a lot of the other inflammatory based uh, products. The biggest takeaway that I think viewers from this video should, should learn from this is that gluten is not a fad. Gluten is something that's real and gluten sensitivity affects a lot of people. I've seen it for a long time and uh, it's not a fad diet. My biggest advice to anybody listening is to, if you're really interested to know if you have a sensitivity, take all of your gluten foods out of your diet for a minimum of four to six weeks. Most people try this, they do it for a week, they'll do it for a couple of weeks, but technically those antibodies take four to six weeks to clear out. Take it out for four to six weeks. You've got nothing to lose, you've got a lot to gain. And then if you really wanna be sure how you feel, you reintroduce it and see what's going on. There are a number of tests you can run to find out biochemically if there's any specifics, but that's a simple and easy take home thing to do.